Hey guys, Gabriel with Chrome Unbox, and today we're talking Linux apps. Uh, I've got my Linux hat on. It's the same as my Chrome OS hat. It's just turned around backwards, but we've been diving into Linux on Chrome OS a lot lately, and when we do stuff like that, we get a lot of questions. So we started a new series called The Command Line. You can check it out. Uh, the first post went out earlier this week, and all we're gonna do is explore stuff that you can do on your Chromebook with Linux. Uh, in case you aren't aware, Linux is now supported on Chrome OS for a lot of devices. Uh, you can install it directly from the settings menu and it lets you install Linux apps and use them alongside Chrome OS. It's a really awesome feature and it's really helpful for a lot of people who've been looking to bridge the gap between Windows, Mac, and Chrome OS. Uh, so today we're gonna go kind of off into the weeds because we've been getting a lot of comments about having a desktop. Now, if you've ever used a Chromebook with the old Crouton environment, you can actually install a desktop on Chrome OS because you're side loading a different Linux distribution alongside Chrome OS. With the new Linux that's built into Chrome OS, you don't get a desktop environment. You have to install your apps and then your apps have their own interface. But somebody said, that Crouton was actually better than Crostini because of the desktop. While I don't necessarily agree with that, I had to find out if you could do it. So today we're gonna take a look at how to install a full Linux desktop with icons, widgets, clocks, everything you can think of on a Chromebook in stable, not in dev mode, and see if it works. But before we do, this video is brought to you by NordVPN. It's the VPN of choice for users around the world and it works across platforms, desktop, mobile, and uh, yes, Chrome OS. Uh, we recommend it and we love it. If you wanna learn more, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN today. As we mentioned, uh, Chrome OS now supports Linux apps. You can access it in the, in the uh, settings menu, turn on Linux, and then you still have to kind of know your way around the terminal to install applications. If you wanna learn more about that, our command line article that we launched last week gives you the basic how-to of installing Linux on your Chromebook and where to start for installing applications. If you're interested in a desktop and you just wanna have a desktop environment, because honestly, that's something a lot of Chrome OS users have wanted, please understand this is not a Chrome OS desktop. Linux is going to run as a window on top of Chrome OS, just like Chrome does, just like any other application does. But if you want it, it's there and you can have it. And honestly, it looks pretty cool because you've never seen a Chromebook with desktop icons and all these things on it. And that's exactly what we've done. Um, it can be a little bit buggy because you're running an environment on top of an environment in a container and all that stuff. But we just wanted to try it out to see if it worked and it did. So there are a few little uh, housekeeping things that you have to do before you get started. Again, the command line article has those things in it, but to install KDE desktop, which is a desktop environment, you literally just have to drop a couple commands into the terminal and wait. It takes about 45 minutes to install, but once it's installed, you can launch it and you will have a full customizable desktop that you can use however you want. There's even an app store where you can download apps as opposed to using the command line. And for some users, that might be really appealing. We'll include all the links in the video description of how to do this, what commands to use, and they'll be in the article as well. Uh, again, it's not difficult. It just takes a little bit of time. But before we go in, don't get intimidated. Linux runs in a container on Chrome OS. It's enabled through the settings menu. If you feel like something's broken or if your Chromebook's a little buggy or sluggish after you do this, all you have to do is turn Linux off and it will literally delete everything that you installed via Linux and you can start over from scratch. All right, so in case you haven't got it set up already, head to the Chrome Unbox, check out the command line, see how to get Linux installed and ready on your device. Once you've done that, there's one other thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you install KDE. Now, KDE is not a Linux distribution, it is a interface. It used to stand for Cool Desktop Environment, and essentially it's just a skin for Linux. So it works with a couple different distributions. So just think about your mobile phone. Most mobile manufacturers have their own look for Android. You've got Samsung, OnePlus has Oxygen OS. It's just a skin to give you a graphic user interface or GUI for your uh, operating system. Uh, before you do this, you will want to change your Linux password because if you don't, there might be a point in time where KDE will prompt you for that password. And I'm gonna be honest, 
I don't know what the default Linux password is for Linux on Chrome OS. I've tried to figure it out, but it's easy to change. So you're just gonna open your terminal up. It'll be in your launcher. Uh, and then from there, you're going to type sudo space P-A-S-S-W-D space root. It's gonna prompt you to change your Unix password. You're gonna type it in and hit enter. You're gonna type it in and hit enter again. You're not gonna see it. So if you type it in incorrectly the second time, it'll just prompt you to type it in again. That reset your password. So now anytime from here on out, if KDE asks you for a password or if the screen times out and it goes to the lock screen, just type in that password and you should be good to go. Now, that's done. You're going to install the KDE desktop. I've done this four or five different ways because there are different methods and different dependencies and there's different things that you can install along with it add-ons. This is the cleanest, smoothest way I've done it so far. So this is the way we're gonna go. You're gonna go back to your terminal and you're gonna type sudo apt-get install task-kde-desktop. Hit enter and then sit back order a pizza, go get some coffee, do whatever. This will take about 45 minutes or so, depending on your device. I've done it on my Chromebox. I've done it on the uh, Pixelbook Go i5, and it, it took a good 45 minutes to install. Uh, once it is installed, I ran into an issue one time where it wasn't recognizing the display. Now that's not the display on my computer. That's the display that Linux uses to display everything. Uh, it has something to do with X servers and all that. Anyway, you are going to drop another command in there and it's just going to add a line of code to Linux and then it should work from there on out. It's in the description as well and in the article. If you don't get that error, don't worry about it. You're good to go. Uh, once the installation is complete, you'll go back to your prompt on the terminal and you're going to type start KDE. It's that simple. No spaces, no anything. And once you do, it's going to launch a clean, empty KDE desktop. Now remember, this functions just like a window on Chrome OS. You can three finger swipe and you're gonna see your Linux desktop, your Windows, everything else that's running, your terminal. Don't close your terminal because if uh, KDE is running and you close the terminal, it's gonna shut KDE down. But once you've started KDE, you'll see that it is just pretty much a blank slate. Uh, just desktop, there's a menu at the top left, but if you right click on the desktop, you'll get all of the features you would on a Linux machine or a Windows machine for that matter. You can add widgets, you can customize your desktop with different applications, you can drag app icons and shortcuts on there, you can put a trash can, uh, I've got a big clock on mine, and it's fully functional and it works really well. There is a small package store where you can download some different applications, but the cool part about KDE on Chrome OS is if you install any applications from the command line, just installing them via the terminal, they will show up in KDE when you launch KDE. One other cool thing, since this desktop environment is technically running in a window, you can add it to one of your Chrome OS virtual desktops. So you just swipe up, create a new desk, and then drop it into that new desk. So now your Linux environment is separated by itself. And if you enable the new gestures flag, you can swipe back and forth between those desktops using a four finger swipe left and right. So you can keep your Linux environment isolated by itself. So it'll have even more real Linux desktop feel to it. So yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so there you go. Uh, we've installed a full Linux desktop environment on the Chromebook. Again, I wouldn't use this on the regular, but I know there are a lot of people that one, like having a full Linux desktop and two, People have clamored for widgets and desktop icons on Chrome OS for how long now? 10 years, eight years, how long Chrome OS has been around. So if you really wanna do it, you can. Uh, we'll continue to test different interfaces. Uh, XFCE was my go-to when I used Crouton on my old Chromebooks. I've tried installing it, it didn't work great. It was really buggy and it crashed a lot, but I'd say as Crostini involves, there'll be more and more desktop environments that we can use and we'll keep trying them out. So that's the whole purpose of this series and we'd love to hear from you guys. I already got an email this morning from someone in India who's trying to install a Linux app and they're having some issues. It's uh, throwing some errors for them. And we wanna figure out along the way with you guys what works and what doesn't. So if there's something you'd like to try on a Chromebook but you're kinda scared or you don't know your way around the terminal or you'd just rather see me do it than you, 
drop me a line, shoot me an email, drop a comment, hit us up on Twitter because we'd love to hear from you and I'd love to try it out. This is exciting to me. It's really cool stuff and I love doing it. So that's it. Until next time, guys, I hope you like this one. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll get an alert every time we put one of these new videos out because there's going to be more and more. And don't forget to check out the command line. It's going to be a weekly, maybe twice a week, uh, article and or video just about Linux on Chrome OS. So there you go. Until next time, we'll see you.